Hey there, this is Teresa from Lone Star Custom Quilts. Um, I've posted a couple of videos in the past recently on how I do my quilting um, with pantographs from the front of my long arm machine. I have a very small room, so I'm not able to get behind my long arm. So um, I have figured out a way to do it from the front of my machine. And um, I have two videos that I've already posted, YouTube videos. Um, I've been asked by several people to do a third on uh, more details on how to advance to the next row. So that's what I'm gonna be showing um, first off. And then I'm gonna show a couple of things that I use, uh, some of my favorite tools and a couple of things that I use to, um, to do the pantographs from the front. So I'm gonna turn over here and I'll show you guys how to advance to the next row. I am just about to finish this row. to go to the next row. Um, I always start right to left. I don't know if that's right or wrong. Um, that's just how I do it. Uh, I know a lot of people have issues with their long arms that doesn't want to stitch from right to left. Um, but I have something that I use, I'll tell you about in just a second, um, that might help you with that. So to advance, I'm gonna move my needle back down here. You can see my laser here. I think you can see it. Um, it's actually just a red dot. It looks like it's glowing on camera, but it's actually just a little red dot. I have um, a, it's actually a cat laser I bought off of Amazon. It is chargeable. I have um, a micro charger that I just plug it in when I need to and charge it. I don't have to take it on and off of the, um, off of the handlebars, and I do just have it taped on there. So I know it's kind of cheesy, but it works, and I can adjust it just a little bit. So, um, on the pantograph, I am, um, I have it attached to foam board, or foam sheets, actually, it's foam sheets that look like this. Um, they're real flexible, but they're firm enough that it will hold it um, on the, take it on the bar here, on the belly bar, not the take-up bar, the belly bar. So, um, I use clips to put the, to hold the pantograph onto the foam, and clips to hold it onto the quilt. So I usually will try to clip one on the side, and uh, this is the back of the fabric, and then uh, one on the edge of the quilt top, just like that. So um, I do also mark with a friction pin. I don't know if you can see that on here. Um, I mark the side, the edge of the quilt, so I know how to line it up. This helps me um, get everything lined up when I advance. So I'm going to take my clips off. I'll move my frame forward. And you don't want to move it too forward because you've got to be able to see um, your previous row. Let me move this over. Um, you've got to be able to see where you previously stitched. So the key is to um, get your laser lined up on the paper. You're going to put your needle over the furthest point, the closest point of the pantograph closest to you because um, that's going to give you, that's going to tell you how much space you need. Um, on the pantograph, there's a, uh, the dark print, that's where you're currently going to print. Above it, you're going to see a lighter shade print and that's um, your previous row. So I'm gonna put my needle where the previous row was and it's gonna hopefully line up. This is actually really good because um, I've got it at that exact point. And so I'm just gonna go down the row and I'll just, every two or three um, sections of the pantograph that I come to, I'll just make sure 
but I get it lined up. So when I get to the end, um, I should line up on this edge, which I am, and my laser should line up on my previous row at the same point where my needle is at, and it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip these back. And then I can start again. And so I'm gonna come back and um, I always note on my pantograph where my start, start point is. Um, this one was really easy because it just so happened to line up at the beginning of the pantograph. But sometimes I'll have to move it over and if that's the case, I'll use my friction pen to, um, with an arrow or just to mark start. Uh, I use the friction pen because I can erase it. It comes right off. So I don't have to worry about um, what am I gonna do the next time whenever, um, when I wanna use the pantograph again and I have those marks on there. So the, the friction pen lets me erase uh, my previous marks. So I'm just gonna make sure my quilt is all good from being advanced and I'll pull up my thread. Take a couple of stitches and I'll just start. So that's how you're going to advance it. Um, I do, okay, so I talked about the laser. They don't sell this laser anymore on Amazon, so you can find something similar to it, comparable to it. Um, it's just a cat laser. Um, it has like three different um, lasers, I think, or types of laser. Um, the red dot is really what you want to look for. It's the smallest, and I know it doesn't look right on camera but it is actually just a red dot on there. It doesn't look like it, but it is. Um, and so you can find something similar. I think I paid like maybe seven or eight dollars for it. The foam was, um, I don't know, maybe about twelve dollars total for all of it. I have additional sheets that I can add when I have a bigger, a longer, wider quilt um, I can add to it and um, the clips I already had, so it's very inexpensive, uh, but I don't have room to get behind my machine, so this allows me to be able to uh, do pantographs from the front of my machine. So I hope that helps you. Um, a couple of things, I'm gonna turn the camera around. Well, maybe I won't. Okay. Apparently I can't, once I'm filming, I can't move it. So I'll just put it back on here and I'll go from there. Sorry, I know it's kind of awkward because I'm here by myself and I'm doing this by myself. So sorry about that. Okay, um, far as the needles, um, I use Schmidt's ballpoint needles and um, if you know Kelly Klein, if you don't follow Kelly Klein, you need to. She um, got me onto the um, ballpoint needles. So um, there we go, get the lighting right. So these are the ballpoint needles. I use size 18. My machine loves the size 18. It doesn't matter really what fabric. I've never had to change it. Um, one of the advantages to using the ballpoint, and I know it's weird and it doesn't sound like um, you should be able to use a ballpoint on a long arm, but trust me, uh, trust Kelly Klein, they're awesome. Um, it, it does eliminate a lot of people who have a problem with your thread shredding or breaking when you go right to left. I don't have that problem. I, it's not really a problem for me. I occasionally might have that, but since I've used the ballpoint, I don't at all, ever. Um, also, you only have to change these about three times a year, maybe four. You'll, um, you'll know when you need to change it because you'll hear a little thud whenever the needle is punctured into the fabric. You'll, you'll hear that and you'll learn to hear that 
but the needle lasts forever because it's a ballpoint, it's not a sharp. So the sharps have to stay sharp. They'll get dull, they'll get burrs and whatever, the ballpoint doesn't. Um, so I actually, on the side of my machine, I write with a dry erase marker the date that I change my needle so I know going forward if it's been you know four or five months I might want to think about do I want to change it but um, so anyway um, this one was in, put in it's a size 18 and I put it in in July 10th on July 10th so it's been a while um, I probably will change after the first of the year, maybe January, February. Most of my quilting um, done for the year, like as far as um, 2020, of course, today's New Year's Eve, but um, I'll probably start fresh whenever I get heavy into quilting again, maybe at the end of January. Um, let's see, that is about all of that. Now, I do have I use a bobbin winder. I don't know, a lot of people ask about these um, on the uh, Facebook page of Grace um, and the Cunique Facebook page. I, my winder quit working. Um, I have the Cunique 14 Plus and I don't know what my frame is. I bought this setup used um, as a floor model from a uh, dealer. So I don't, I don't remember what the frame is called. It was well before the continuum. I think it might be the SR2, but it's a 10 foot frame. I have the Cunic 14 Plus. Love it, it's great. I've never had a problem. One time I've had to have it in the shop because the bobbin winder quit working. And I understand that's a very common problem. Um, at the time, I, would, I had tons of customer orders and um, couldn't get to the dealer. I have a dealer that's only almost five hours away. so. It's not just a hop across town. So I had to wait a few weeks before I could get to the dealer to have that fixed. But I went ahead and bought this on Amazon. It's, the brand is Axis, A-X-I-S. It is awesome. It does um, all different kinds of sizes of bobbins, but the, the M bobbins that we use in the uh, Cunique uh, work perfectly on here. You can set the, um, the amount of thread that's on there. I do suggest not filling the bobbin all the way up. You want to leave just a little bit of space because it, um, it will tend to um, backlash in the, in the bobbin casing. I use glide thread. Um, that's, I mean, almost 100% of the time I use glide thread. I love glide thread. I wind my own bobbins. I don't buy pre-wound bobbins. I know many people love the pre-wound bobbins. I um, have tried them one time and I didn't, I didn't have good luck with it. So I just do my own. Um, I do also have a pair of scissors that I have attached to the front of my machine. It's just on a magnet. So it's a lanyard and I just clip the scissors on there. This works awesome. So when I'm working, I can just clip and retract it back up there. Um, that works great. So um, I think that's about everything I wanted to talk about. If you guys have any questions, um, feel free to send me a message. My Facebook page is Lone Star Custom Quilts, and um, I hope you'll enjoy this. Thank you.